Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and today I want to give you a little bit of advice. It's around that time of year where I speak to graduates and they're often negotiating their first job. And the reality is whether you're doing your first job or any job that you've had, at least for me personally, I've almost always negotiated my salary. In fact, I think it's something that you should do. It can be a little bit uncomfortable, but the reality is you often don't get the best salary your first offer. So here's a few things I want to talk about when it comes to negotiating. By all means, take this worth a grain of salt, talk to others around you, but here's what sort of worked for me. So I want to go ahead and give you a little bit of a list of some things that I think are going to be useful. So here's the sort of slide that I'll give you here, and I'll talk about some of these things, but I wanted to go ahead and talk about them one at a time here. And the most common thing that I've seen that folks seem to do well with negotiating are, well, really these three things here base salary, the bonus, and stock options. Those are usually the most three common things that you'll get in an offer where there's a range provided. So I think it's important to figure out what this base range is. You can often ask a recruiter when you are going through the interview process. They might not give you a number. And I also usually tell folks, try not to commit to a number when you are actually asking if you're interested in position. So for instance, you might have a phone call. They might say, you know, thank you, Mike, for talking to us. Uh, what sort of salary are you looking for? And usually I might say something like within this range. Now, how can you figure out that range? Well, that's where I've got some tools here. So levels is a pretty good one, or of course, glass door. And depending on if you have worked, you can kind of check some of these things out, but you know, do check out some of these companies here. So let's just go ahead and try Microsoft here, for instance. And if you're just starting as a graduate, usually you can at least ask the recruiter if this is SDE, SDE, Software Development Engineer uh, 2, and you'll have some range here. Now, take in mind that you're going to have to account for location. So that's where these uh, websites are usually pretty useful if you go ahead and explore and see where the data points are coming from, meaning is this Atlanta, Georgia versus Redmond versus Europe, etc. You know, different locations will have a different range, but do your best effort to find that based off of your years of experience and the data that you can find online. I think it's good to be prepared coming into an interview to have that. I think you'll often get asked that and you certainly will when it comes to the offer stage. Now, when it also comes to negotiating your base salary, though, unless the company is telling you, you know, final and best offer, there's usually a little bit of wiggle room, meaning that they're not necessarily going to um, give you the maximum. It depends on the corporation. Again, do your due diligence. I've seen some folks uh, or some companies, meaning that they're flat hierarchies, meaning everybody gets the same salary. If that's what they say, you know, you need to identify that you're a cultural fit by accepting that everyone's on a level playing field. Um, so, you know, do a little bit of um, research when, when that, um, if that specific situation arrives. But otherwise, you know, if you've been engineering for a while or you're just starting and you're going to a place like one of these big tech companies, there's usually a little bit of wiggle room, you know, even if it's a thousand dollars in the base salary. Um, I just wanted to show you that, you know, if you look at, let's take a salary of say $90,000 here. And let's say you get a raise 3% every year. Let's just assume that's, um, you know, your number that you'll get. Uh, it makes even a big difference over the course of 10 years where, you know, you'll get to say $120,000 uh, by the end of, you know, 10 years, if you stick it out that long, but let's say you even get 2000 more dollars, calculate that out. And well, you know, you're making a few more thousand dollars here. Okay, you're up to uh, 123 versus where were you uh, before, you know, uh, 120. So, okay, $3,000. Um, the reality is, you know, over time, a thousand or two thousand dollars a year might really move the needle for you when it comes to monthly expenses or uh, finding parking if you're in a big city. So ask for that. And that can be a way to sort of justify, say, hey, I need to bump up from 90 to uh, 92. Or uh, let's put in like if you're a, a big tech, I don't know, maybe it's more like 150,000 these days or something <laughs> for a base salary, you know, even just bumping from 150 uh, after 10 years to 152. Yeah, you see you land again, a few more thousand years. And that's at a annual rate of 3%. So what I'm saying here is, you know, even if it's just a little bit, 
uh, that you can move up. There's usually some wiggle room. It can make a big difference to you. And in many cases, just mentally, it can make you feel like, you know, getting what you asked for will make you feel better that you did ask and you did receive, right? How aggressive to be? This is uh, my next sort of advice here. Um, and it sort of depends on, again, the company, the culture, a little bit here when it comes to base salary. If, if you are able to get a range out of a recruiter asking for, say, $10,000 above that range, if they give you a range of 120 to 130 and you ask for 140, you might, you know, it, it's likely they are being honest if they're giving you that range. Um, you know, uh, short of very egregious cases, maybe, uh, and then asking for way more than that, again, might depend on how senior you are, but just be a little bit careful with that negotiation uh, tactic. That would be my uh, non-financial uh, advice, but my you know, sort of recommendation on just sort of proceeding cautiously um, by going way over. Um, you know, you can get sort of disqualified for that. Um, and usually these are good questions to maybe ask up front if you are doing a lot of job searching um, and if you have multiple options or if you have options in hand. That also makes it easier to negotiate the base salary if you're, you know, actually going through and you have another offer, um, you know, in, in hand or, or, or in the process. I think that can make things more competitive. So those are just some things on base salary. A few other notes on base salary while we're here. Um, if you're doing an internship or a co-op, oftentimes what I found, uh, this is one case where I haven't really negotiated um, because I've just been happy, at least while I was a student, to acquire that internship or co-op because really the work experience is what uh, matters. Now, I have seen students actually ask for more and have done so successfully, but again, proceed with caution um, considering that you know, the internship in a way is almost a trial run. So I'm not saying never do it, you know, use your own judgment. Um, the, the successful cases that I've seen have been students who were at startups where rules were a little bit looser and they were also negotiating uh, where they could work part time while in school. So they wanted a little bit more incentive to uh, have some more money while being in school uh, and part time sort of made that work. So consider those situations carefully. But again, if you're just negotiating the base salary for, say, internship uh, or a co-op uh, opportunity, as is done uh, in the in the states here, um, you know, do a little bit of research to figure out what the range is, and then proceed cautiously um, for internship and co-op cases. But certainly for full-time positions, do consider you know negotiating your base salary. Now, the other common things that you can often do, maybe you won't be able to get a company to budge on the base salary. And, you know, the way that I like to look at this again from the financial calculator is base salary is usually what's going to move the needle most for you. You're getting that actual money. It's not a hypothetical thing that's going to happen. So that's why, from my personal perspective, I've always tried to negotiate uh, base salary when it comes to these things. But uh, oftentimes, if they're unable to budge there, you might be able to get them to budge on the bonus because that's sort of a one-time payment. Usually, it's also coming with an agreement that you're going to work at that company for, say, a year or two years' time. Otherwise, you forfeit that bonus and have to pay it back, so be careful for that. Uh, but that's what can give you a little bit more negotiating power, for instance. You might be able to say, hey, can I go up? five or ten thousand or whatever seems like a reasonable amount from your research on the bonus um and companies usually have a little bit more flexibility from the hiring manager to say yeah we'll just you know it's a one-time cost uh it's worth getting that person on board for that one-time cost so they don't the company doesn't have to go through that hiring process again to bring somebody on um so i could recommend that now do consider if you're in the us that uh you'll get taxed on that bonus um so you know Consider that for what you're asking for and how you spend that money <laughs> when it comes down to that. Um, now, the other thing that might uh, occur in two separate uh, scenarios, I suppose, is if you're working for a big company that is publicly traded, you might get stock options. Um, so that might be something most commonly what I've seen is that over four years, you vest 25%. So let's go ahead and bring this to the whiteboard just so you can see. You might get a company that says, hey, I'll give you a thousand uh, shares and you get 25% of those each year. So year one, you will vest 250 shares. So if you uh, leave the company, you can you know take those 250 shares and cash them out. 
Year two, you'll have 500 shares. Year three, 750. Year four, you will have vested all 1,000 of your shares. Okay, companies might do this different uh, depending on the breakdown, but that's the most common structure I've seen over four years. So 25% a year. That could be, again, um, uh, something that you get. You might be able to negotiate how much stock it is. I've seen that at more senior level positions happen um, in the past, but not as much as an entry level. So again, consider that. Um, what I have seen in the startup world a little bit more, so I would say this is more like, uh, you know, IPO'd, meaning companies, or I should say, um, you know, for publicly uh, traded companies, that's often the case that this occurs. And for, uh, I'll put startups on this other corner here, just to think about for stocks. Um, here again, you have a little bit more negotiating room because it's a bit of a hypothetical, but you could argue for how many shares you get, say uh, 10,000, you might get a uh, attractive uh, number here. But these shares might also come at a particular strike price, um, meaning that and, and this may be something that you decide, maybe it's different than ownership, um, but just kind of read in between the lines what this means. But if it means 10,000 shares at a strike price of say $10, uh, that usually means that you're getting a you know options contract uh, in some way that might mean, um, you know, this would be a hundred, uh, basically you'd be paying, uh, for a, a contract to have the option to buy 10,000 shares in the company at a strike price of $10 a share. So if the company ends up being worth $10 um, you know, on the stock market, then you're sort of breaking even. Um, but if it ends up being worth $20, then it's free you know, uh, money in that sense, but you have to pay an initial uh, you know, for that contract, okay? That's uh, what I've seen or, you know, a similar situation that I've been in before. Um, and that's also taking the bet that the company does uh, do what's called, at least in the U.S., an initial uh, public offering or an IPO, uh, meaning that it's going to be on the exchange on Wall Street and these types of things here. <laughs> so you can actually buy shares uh, of the company and own some shares in the company. So that's sort of going on the equity side. Uh, if you're on a really small company, you know, maybe you're starting a company with your friends, you might want to actually have a uh, conversation about uh, equity and these types of things. But, you know, just some advice there, how to negotiate that or handle that. Again, uh, figure out if you can, if Everybody is at the same strike price if you're getting preferred shares or common shares. Um, those would be questions that might be worth asking if you reach uh, that stage in the negotiation. Okay, so just some things to look out for. So those are the three most common things that I often see that come with uh, letters. Uh, the three most common things that I think can be uh, negotiated. And again, I think it's worth asking for uh, some of these things. Um, you know, asking for all three, again, uh, be careful, but I usually tell folks, you know, pick one thing that's really important to you and try to negotiate that. Um, so, you know, that that can be a strategic thing for you to, to think about um, and to navigate, okay? Um, and again, it, it depends how much leverage you have sometimes, you know, if you only have one offer and you really need that job, um, and it's an exciting job in an industry that you really want, and maybe it's a competitive industry, you know, maybe in that case, you just take the job and that's fine, right? You work that job for a few years. Um, I don't want to put it or give the advice um, that anyone should, you know, risk <laughs> you know, losing an offer. Uh, but at the same time, I want you to be confident and, and, you know, think about asking when it comes to that stage, hey, is there room so to negotiate? I would like to discuss the base salary and what the range is. Um, could you provide me a range? Um, and then you can kind of, you know, figure out, can you move the needle in your favor a little bit? So those are a few things. And there might be some other, uh, less common things, but other successful things that I've seen negotiated into a job. Uh, again, this is going to vary depending on industry. You know, if it wasn't clear already on this uh, channel, I'm talking more about software engineering, um, positions, but, um, 
Uh, so that's what this advice is sort of related to. But, um, you know, you might be able to get conference support uh, for travel funds. So, you know, oftentimes you can't always negotiate like extra vacation, um, but you might be able to negotiate conferences, which are a way to sort of um, learn and do some professional development. Um, and I think that would sort of be seen as a beneficial thing to the company. So it's sort of a win win um, in that manner. Some folks I've seen do various tuition re reimbursements, whether that's for books, um, learning materials from online courses. Uh, oftentimes, companies will already have a policy if there's actual university uh, funding available, but you might be able to get some sort of educational fund for your professional development. Um, sometimes you can no negotiate paid volunteer time, meaning if it's just a, a day or something where you go uh, uh, do some volunteer work that actually counts as time worked, but is seen as something that's contributing towards a positive, um, you know, uh, thing that's part of the company's mission statement. So those are a few things you can think about. Um, some other things that you might um, uh, also consider is, you know, during the interview process, you might ask about when merit reviews happen. Um, so if merit reviews, for instance, happen at the end of the year in December and you're getting hired in January, well, you've sort of missed that cycle for when raises uh, might be initiated. So you could actually maybe ask and say, hey, can I negotiate um, for a merit review um, halfway through the year? Um, and that might be a way, again, to sort of bump your salary up a little bit. So again, if they're if the company, your employer, that's you know, just not able to move on the base salary, that might be a creative way to sort of say, hey, later on, um, can you bump me up a few percent on the salary uh, if I'm doing a good job, um, you know, in a few months. So something that you can consider here that might be uh, useful. Um, if you are more uh, senior and again, might depend on the types of uh, engineering that you're doing, you might be able to negotiate for some of these things like time off, more equity, maybe office or lab space. Um, how many direct reports you have, maybe if there's uh, a funding structure or starter funding for you to hire with um, or travel funds or these types of things. So those might be some things that you're considering. Um, I suspect, um, you know, you would have an idea of what options are available if you're, you know, uh, senior enough or, or have had that opportunity in the past. It might be worth asking for, especially if um, you know, just looking at levels, for instance, if you're applying for positions that are sort of um, higher up here to see what some of those um, ideas might be. Again, this is more just for you to think about, talk to some other folks, connect with, uh, network with some other folks um, to see what might be available. All right, folks, so that's sort of uh, my advice on negotiating salary. The fundamental idea here is that you should. You should negotiate something. You know, feel like you're winning and you want to be working at a place where you're happy and feel respected. Um, and again, the more you can uh, put leverage on your side, meaning if you have other offers or if you've done your research uh, on what appropriate ranges are and compensation, uh, that can help you. So I hope this, you know, helps you uh, out in the negotiation stage. I wish you, uh, well, and if you have other comments or discussions or opinions that you'd like to share, feel free to engage in the discussion. And with that said, folks, thanks for your uh, time and attention. This has been a topic that I've wanted to get out for a while because uh, a lot of folks ask about it and, uh, hopefully this helps you. So take it worth a grain of salt if that's what it is. But, um, uh, from my own experience, these, uh, tips have helped. And with that said, folks, I'll look forward to whatever you want to talk about next, and please let me know what those next topics might be in the comments below, and maybe your question will get answered. All right, folks, take it easy.